This is a translation of Yevgeny Makarov's post-apocalyptic Moscow of the 18th and 19th centuries. Spasibo Balshoy Yevgeny. I will go into some detail and deconstruct some pictures of the 18th century. Please comment. Well, let's start. Here is a small picture of the Moscow Bridge in 1883. I emphasize, the Moscow Bridge seems to constantly change in detail. Here is an interesting waterfront road. It looks like clay or sand. People have disappeared. There are horse-drawn carts, but no people. There is a steep embankment up to the bridge. Notice the chopped wood for the fireplace. Let's look at the lanterns. They look ordinary. I notice the spire on top, and I read from other bloggers that this is some kind of mini dome, cupola. I can agree. What is inside? It's a bulbous device. Inside is an element. On this basis, I assume this is not a kerosene lamp, nor is it gas. It looks like a huge incandescent lamp. Can we see the thread in approximation? You can see its size. Also, the glass is not transparent and not cloudy. This is not an oil lamp. What kind of street lights did the city used to have? I found another interesting detail. You can see the Kremlin wall through the glass of the lantern. The glass is transparent. There is no soot or ash from burning. This looks like a Varota Skolavratam. In English, this translates to collar gate. It has eight beams and two posts on each side, and perhaps some kind of antenna. Honestly, I'm nerd. Let's zoom in. I must say, these lights are everywhere. It's daytime, and there is only one guy standing here. But generally, there are no people. Is this a smaller group? The lanterns are very interesting and appear everywhere. There is no monument because it's the 80th year. It is clear that the whole tower is dirty and a crack runs from the top downward. Under the bridge, there are pieces of rubbish. Remarks are made about a tree, the water level and clearness of the water. On this side, where they put booths, the yard material is worth remarking on. Blogger comments are worth mentioning. Many people are interested in olden times. People say some great stuff. Someone compares the abandoned horse-drawn carts to the legend of the Flying Dutchman, a ghost ship that never reaches port. Even people not interested in alternative history notice such things. This photo is at the turn of the century. 1900. The monument means a celebration and coronation already passed. An interesting house is worth mentioning. Now there is a cone on top. The antenna wheel from the previous photo is no longer present. Before we saw large shrubs in this area. Now there are small trees at the Kremlin. In this image we see wireless poles with bars. This is around 1901 to 1903. These wireless poles raise questions, so the lanterns shown of an earlier date are not present in this photo. The wireless poles with bars are now present. I tried dimming the contrast of the photo to see if wires attached to the poles can be detected. I do not see wires. The next comment was hard to translate. It mentions wireless technology. Here is a different lantern. It's interesting. First, it's really high up. Second, it's a very unusual shape. It has a large round bulb. Hanging high, it's probably not gas, even if we assume there is already electricity. The road looks a little different from before. It's cobbled with little stones. Here below is the same lantern again, but look closely. There is a circular light bulb. The edges of the light bulb and the highlight from it are visible. I do not think that even during this time there would be gas mains. I speculate this is a wireless street light. Down below 
we see an improvised pier. There are more people, but seemingly not enough considering this is the center of Moscow. And something I just showed you is now missing. Those pillars with bars are gone. It's confusing because the dating is written on the same time period, 1901 to 1903. Under the Moscow Bridge, the river is cleaner. The wall embankments are also cleaner. The water is cleaner. Someone is fishing. There is no garbage or dirt. There are some poles with lattices, and there is some strange incomprehensible thing. The street lights are the same ones from the 1880s. Very strange things happen. The lighting equipment is constantly changing. It's likely a dating error on the photographs. Here are such rare pictures. This is also the end of the 19th century. Now let's go into it more. Again, the first half of the 19th century. It has a kind of red lithography of 1837. It is assumed that this is the inside of the Kremlin. Notice how everything is lined with stone slabs. The only thing I cannot understand is how such stone slabs were brought on carts. And, with their conventional hammers, they precisely cut rectangles and squares. We are not able to see how such large stones were cut. What tool is this guy holding? It's unclear. Here are wooden carts carrying heavy slabs, and yet the men are working with small hand tools. Did they use hand saws to cut the stones? How did they lift the stones on and off the carts? Back to the light sources. I think we are not told everything about what happened back then. Here we are offered what Moscow looked like in the 18th century. The gates of the circumference of Moscow de la Barte, 1799. Again in the foreground we see stone building fragments and the remains of walls and lots and lots of open land. The next view of Moscow is from the balcony of the Kremlin Palace to the side of Moscow Bridge. The name of the artist is not given. This is in 1797. It can be seen there is a descent downwards. But why are the walls covered here? And there are traces of destruction. Inside the fortress, the land has lots of hills. Is the river as wide and deep as it is today? It looks like there is a lot of dirt on the river embankment. Things look a little overgrown, and there are some stone fragments. Most importantly, look at Moscow. Moscow's buildings are not wooden. They are all stone. Before the fire of 1812, all the houses were stone. Walls are also equipped with access and roads, access to the river. There is a lot of commentary on wooden buildings compared to stone buildings. I'm not sure I follow the discussion here. That's me talking. Why are there so many wooden houses here? There are many fishing lodges and temporary homes. If there was some kind of disaster, why was there nowhere to live? On the right we see embankments of clay tight up to the fortress walls of the tower. All perimeter walls of the Kremlin inside are overgrown, both turrets and walls. As for the wooden bridge, 
Why was it not possible to build a stone bridge? What was the need for a temporary wooden bridge? Look at these outfits. They were well dressed. Some styles look Russian, others French. Lots of work is being done here to the earth. There is lots of digging. The dirt looks like clay. Who is this gentleman on the right? The people must be rich. They are dressed in wigs. Let's look at this black and white engraving. The outfits are slightly different from before. Note their headdress. Let's return to the color picture. I do not understand the comparison being made here. That's me talking. Look, on the right are two pyramids. I'm not making jokes. Наряду с заваленным под завязку Кремлем заросший храм, да еще и обломанная стена. Men in hats against the background of overgrown turrets and two fragments of stone. Ladies in European dresses and cavaliers. The Russian women appear with a peasant man in the shadow of the ruins. These two men are clearly not Slavic. And yes, in general, Moscow looks post-apocalyptic. Notice the wreckage of stone buildings on the right. Out of the ground there appears part of a brick wall. In the distance, the temple windows and doors situate close to the ground. The doors are so covered with earth. You can't open them yet. The earth has not been dug out yet. The carousel looks like it no longer works. Why is this man skating on the ground? Well, Moscow River at the end of the 18th century has a remnant of a serious catastrophe. Apparently, there is still a lot of work to bring everything in order. My friends, my short video is over. Please support my channel. I plan on deconstructing more pictures in future videos. Литографии. Я продолжу это дело. И огромная просьба поддержать видео лайками. Всем пока. До новых видео.